We are now on to the more practical aspect of how we interface with these vectors. The answer is using vector store. Loosely speaking, when I talk about vector store, it can include the vector databases, the libraries, and also the plugins on top of their existing regular databases. But why do I care about vector stores? Why can't I just use a regular database to store vectors? Vector stores aren't actually too different from regular databases. Specifically, a vector database is actually just like a regular database. It inherits full-fledged database properties like CRUD, which stands for create, read, update, and delete. But a vector database is specialized to store unstructured data as vectors. And in fact, the differentiating capability of vector stores is providing search as a service. You don't have to implement your own search algorithm. Vector stores provide search functionality for you out of the box. But what about vector libraries or plugins? Let's talk about libraries first. So vector libraries do create vector indexes for you. And as we mentioned a few segments ago, a vector index is a data structure that helps you to conduct efficient vector search. So if you don't want to integrate with a new database system, it's actually completely fine to use a vector library that creates these vector indexes for you. Typically, a vector index can contain three different components. The first is an optional pre-processing step that users typically implement on their own, where you may want to normalize your embeddings or reduce the embedding dimensions. The primary step is where an indexing algorithm is actually involved. For example, we talk about files and we talk about HNSW. And the last optional post-processing step is where you may actually want to further quantize or hash your vectors to optimize for search speed. So a vector library like FIES is often sufficient for small and static data, but all vector li libraries do not have database properties. So it means that you wouldn't come to expect a vector library to have vector, to have vector database properties like the CRUD support, uh, data replication, or being able to store the data on disk, uh, or you probably just have to wait for the full import to complete before you can query. And it means that it also means that every single time you make changes to the data, the vector index will have to completely rebuild from scratch. So whether or not you use a vector database or a vector library really comes down to how often does your data change and whether you need the full-fledged database properties that comes with vector database or not. On the other hand, there are also existing relational databases or search systems that provide you vector search plugins. They typically have fewer metrics or ANN choices, but I won't be surprised if you will see a lot more vector search support for these plugins, even in the coming months. So now let's talk a little bit more about vector, base, vector databases or not. So let's start by remembering that whether or not you use a vector database, it doesn't affect the speed of your ANN under the hood. The decision comes down to three main things. Do you have that much data? Typically, we'll only see the need for having a vector database when you have millions or billions of records. And how fast do you actually need the query time to be, your serving time, your latency? And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, do you actually need the full-fledged database properties? So if your data is mostly static and you don't expect to update your data all that much, then not using a vector database is often a fine start. In that case, you can often just start by using a vector library. But if your data changes quickly, it can be much cheaper to offline complete, compute the embeddings first and then store them in a vector database for on-demand query later. This way, you can also avoid using an online model to dynamically compute the embeddings. And of course, unsurprisingly, the cons for adding a vector database to your architecture means that you are going to pay for an additional service and you do have one more system to learn, integrate, and maintain. If you are interested in exploring vector databases, I've provided some startup comparisons across the popular choices. And note that the information here may evolve over time. 
Lastly, we'll wrap up with some best practices.